Well, hello there, my name is John Meyer, and I'm excited to share a new contact prototype that I'm calling Brushed Nipple Gongs. For the past few years, I've been making what I call prototypes. They're contact instruments that I make to experiment with sounds for my own work, and I've been sharing them with all of you, and it's been awesome. I recently went to Nashville and met up with some music-making friends. The first was Scott Rausch, he has this great studio with all these percussion instruments, but he's got these gongs and he likes to play them on the ground with brushes muted. And I was all about that. So we sampled them and that's what we came up with. I'm going to let him tell you about that in a minute. What you can see now in this crude little mock-up is I have a left hand and a right hand. They're identical samples. I thought it would be easier to play them uh, if I split them out identically. And I also divided them up into two different groups. We have the nipple center and the edge, which is the outside. So let's just look at the left hand, which is down here. That's the sound of the brush being hit right on the top. On the edge, it sounds a little trashier. Initial thought was maybe you could put the left hand, the nipple, and the right hand, the edge, so you get So you could play them separate, but I don't know if that's exactly how I'd want to use this. So I give you the option to mix and match the way that you think is appropriate or just play them in one octave. Here's what Scott has to say about the gongs. There are eight gongs total and they're tuned roughly to a diatonic scale. I think it's closest to either C uh, or D major. If you hang them up, you get a traditional gong sound. You can uh, hit them on the outside. Get a different sound than if you hit it in the center. My favorite way to play them, however, is to lay them flat on the ground. Play them as more of a muted um, sound, which is what we're going to be sampling today. Uh, I like mallets or brushes the best. These gongs have made their way onto indie rock records that I've played on. Plenty of my library music has these uh, gong sounds. I did my best to map the gongs to the appropriate keys. There are some notes that are stretched more than others and you can kind of hear that it's artificial. But in context, and especially if you, you know, have fun with delay, you're not gonna notice those minor flaws. It's been a while, but this is a mix of multiple different microphone positions. There's some coals and I forgot the rest, but you'll probably see them in the video. For these prototypes, I think it's best to do one simple mix the way that I would use it for most of the time. Now, if this becomes something else, we can break all that out and use all those different mic positions and give you control. But for now, it's simple. Right now, it's just a contact instrument and it's in context six, unfortunately. It's free, but there's no decent sampler version and it's not perfect yet. The only way that I can make these prototypes and share them with all of you is if I'm okay letting them go at a place where they're not exactly where I want them to be. I got this close. It needs some tweaks, maybe with dynamic layers. And if you have any thoughts on the matter, leave them in the comments and that'll be a place so that I can go read through all of those and perhaps refine this instrument as we go. But here, if you look at the groups, there's the left hand with all the different round robins. There's, I recorded six, but really only had five usable versions. So I got rid of round robin one. That's the groups. And then I duplicated the groups for the different hands to stretch them out on the keyboard. I do have a transient designer. So if I bypass that. If you want to get more of the attack, but this way you get a little more of the decay. So that's for you to tweak if you want to go ahead and make that adjustment. These groups are running into different buses for the contact people. Bus one, two, three, and four. This left hand nipple, left hand edge, right hand nipple, right hand edge. And then I put a little plate reverb just to give it a little size. Download these from my website. When I feel like it's where it needs to be, I'll submit it to Piano Book, which is a great site if you're not familiar, of free contact instruments, decent sampler instruments, but I wanna get ready first. Now, I did not do all of the work on this particular instrument. A few months ago, I received an email from a guy in Finland named Risto 
S. I still don't know Risto's last name. And he looked through the acoustic guitar plugs that I shared, and he wrote me this real nice email. He's like, I think you might be wasting a little time in the way that you're naming things, and I think you're doing a lot more work than you need to do. And he sent me these videos that he made of this Reaper script that he developed. And I know a little bit about Reaper and a little bit about scripts. I know how to execute them. I certainly don't know how to make them, and I don't know exactly what's happening in most of these things. And that's true with what Risto sent me. But I'm going to walk you through this video real quick that he sent me, and I will link to these videos. You can go watch them and learn from him. At some point, I need to do an interview with Risto and get his thoughts and let him explain this, because I need to watch this video probably 30 times before I can understand it. I'm going to hit the bullet points. This is basically the file that I sent him. I cleaned it up some. I put them in order of dynamic layers and round robins so that he can make tweaks from there. The first thing he did was a high pass filter to get rid of some of the low end rumble that was affecting the way that the samples chopped. He ran this chop samples script. Again, download these from the link in the description. And he made some duplicates for some reasons that might make sense here in a moment. He then has a way to go into vertical view for each sample. And this is really cool because he went through and adjusted the start time for each sample so that they were consistent. He ran a script to exit that vertical view. And this is where he adjusted the sample tails. Uh, I soloed and boosted the cutouts tracks by 24 dB in order to hear the tail ends of gong sounds clearly. I selected all the cutout pieces. The items need to be selected for the tail adjustment. I ran increased sample tail script a few times until the gong tails disappeared. He's doing something to manipulate the tails. You can see he did the increased tail length script. What he's doing here is he's adding a MIDI note to these groups. This is before I split the samples into left hand, right hand. Basically, he's just separating the uh, center and the outside and, and giving them MIDI notes. Now he's going through and taking a sample inventory to see if anything is missing. And there was one where there were only five velocity layers instead of six, so that showed up. One had too many samples, and he was able to then go in and figure out what they were, make the adjustments to where everything was uniform. He copied a round robin over to where it would all work. All right, so now he's selecting that second articulation, and he's putting those on a separate track. And then he's running arrange samples for export. Now here he can give them names, their articulation names, gong center, and he is defining the velocity layers and which round robin they're a part of. And now he's to the point of rendering. You can see that he's rendered into these individual folders. And then he shows us the process of making these into an actual instrument, which is super easy once everything is named properly and you have the right high keys and low keys and velocities and all that. That's, a, that's probably a different video. I went way too fast. I know it's obvious that I don't have a clue really what he did. The only way that I'm going to know is by following these steps on the next instrument, which is what I plan to do. At one point, he shared this information on the Piano Book forum. I think it's still there, but I think there's something really interesting here, and I'm excited to learn more about it. But huge thanks to Risto, Risto S for doing all this for me and taking the time. And I apologize because he did this for me like a month and I'm just now getting around to releasing this video. But seriously, anything you have to say, please put them in the comments. I will read them. And I have more sounds coming. Uh, harmonium from my friend Grant and violin from Avery and other videos in the works. But that's it for today. Go grab the brushed nipple gongs that you probably didn't even know you needed. Talk soon. Mm -hmm.